Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Cole and I get to speak with Manny Pacheco about things Hollywood. All things Hollywood and all things ancient Hollywood, historic Hollywood. But, you know, Manny, um, it's great to see you again, first of all. Thanks. But uh, as a guy, we, we know you, of course, for many years, and we know that you are an active broadcaster. You are a uh, an author. You have a wonderful blog, highly respected blog in the film community. You are a historian. You have a lot of uh, aspects to you, one of which is I think most people don't realize is that you really have, as a journalist, I think is a fair word to use, you have your finger on the pulse of Hollywood. Now, granted, your beat is mostly forgotten Hollywood and it's historic Hollywood, Mm -hmm. But you keep in touch with um, all the biggies, all the organizations. You know a lot of actors and directors and producers. And I love your blog, by the way, your weekly blog, which is very uh, timely. And recently you pointed out that our favorite movie channel, for those of us who love old movies, mm. TCM, has been undergoing a whole lot of turmoil. Now, this is news. This is... I behind the scenes kind of news that one might not expect from a Hollywood historian. Um, but you've kept you've kept in touch. What's going on with TCM and why why do you suppose they're going through all these changes? Well, I don't think it's behind the scenes anymore. I think it's way out in the public and TCM uh, uh, is under the parent company of Warner Brothers Discovery and the head, the president of Warner Brothers Discovery decided after the uh, film festival, to actually gut TCM, it, it had, a, 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 I, I think, a staff of 90 uh, full-timers, part-timers, whatever you want to call them, but the, the, these were people that were essential to the content and the curation of that content and uh, the film festivals and uh, how to treat the fans. I mean, everything. I mean, they, th these people were the core um, part of TCM. And uh, the head of uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, David Zaslav, he decided to let go 70 of those 90 employees wow. in what really concerned TCM Nation. I mean, they absolutely went apoplectic. I mean, they <laughs> they could not understand why, why a, a station, which was hardly losing any kind of money at all uh, in terms of budgetary matters, but in return was providing more than just a, a, a being a cable channel. I mean, this is what we call a a, uh, a historical artifact almost. I mean, this, yeah. they, they, they take movies and they tell the history of these movies. I mean, we're preserving history yes. by way of TCM. And now we've lost 70 of these folks, many of which, by the way, had been around for decades. The, 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 the number one, the head of, of the, the department, the number two, uh, who, who is vice president of content creation, Charlie Tabish, and just a whole slew of other folks. And um, this really caused great, great consternation among TCM Nation. And TCM has always had, uh, we know this because we're loyal fans, has always had a very loyal base. And it's been right. very popular. It's been right. very successful as a channel. Well, do you suppose? Do you suppose the changes came? Because it sounds like seventy percent loss of staff. Yeah. Uh, do you suppose those changes came simply because, as they say in business, a new broom sleep, sweeps clean, and he he needed to change. He needed no matter how successful it was, and he let needed me, to make it more successful. Let me offer another alternative. Okay. Th that uh, it's possible that he just figured, hey, look, this thing, it's on autopilot. I keep two or three keep on air people around, okay, which people won't accept, but the rest of it is pretty much an autopilot. I could save a ton of money. Well, and, and he was looking at the bottom line because one of the things that, you know, when Ted Turner established the, the, the station with Robert Osborne and the like, it, it always remained commercial free. And when you're not bringing in revenue so apparently through the use of commercials, 
the person at the top is always going to be concerned because they're in the business of, of, of looking at budgets and, and the bottom line. Sure. So, I mean, if you look at it from a very transparent way, it, it looks like an easy remedy to just gut the station, uh, not, not caring that it's a repository of thousands and thousands of films. Now, granted, they, they don't own the films, and many times they have to, you know, through licensing, they got to bring in the films from other companies. Right. Right. But, I mean, if you look at the alternative, if you look at recent history, let's look at recent history. We had a station, uh, uh, the American uh, uh, Music, uh, the American uh, Movie Network, AMC. AMC. And they, they did the same thing that TMC, uh, TCM did prior to TCM. And then it got gutted. And now you might catch White Christmas during during the holidays. You might catch a Clint Eastwood festival during a, a given weekend, maybe a little John Wayne. And, and the rest of the time, you're not you're not seeing much. I don't I, I really don't even know what they play on that. Yeah, channel. It's the Walking Dead channel. <laughs> well, no, no, that's A&E, which is even worse. Oh, I mean, arts and <laughs> entertainment is now The Walking Dead and Mad Men. <laughs> yes, I mean, th yes, that's it. And what, what people were most afraid of is that TCM would become the station that plays Citizen Kane and Casablanca over, uh, and, over, and, over, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and not much else. And that's you could. Yeah, technically, I guess it would be a classic film channel, but it wouldn't be the gold standard of right. classic film channels. Now, the next part of this becomes like a Frank Capra movie. Honestly, it, it, it you know, all the stars come out. <laughs> Uh, the, the cameo appearances, uh, dramatic decisions, dramatic reversals, and almost, almost, because we don't know how this is really going to end, but almost a fairy tale ending. And it begins with the idea that a man who is dedicated to the preservation of film, Mark Scorsese, along with his pal, you might know the guy, uh, uh, Steven Spielberg, Ooh. And, <laughs> and Paul Thomas Anderson, decides they're going to hold a powwow with Zazla. And so they do. And at the end of their discussion, a, de a very dramatic uh, decision is made. They bring back the vice president of content, Charlie oh. Taylor. Yes, they bring mm -hmm. him back. And, but the other 69 are still gone, which is really a, a, just, a, just a shame, just an absolute yeah. shame. Yeah. But they do bring him back, so the curation of content is going to remain intact for, for as much as he can do alone. But Spielberg and Scorsese strike a deal with Zaslav. Zaslav wants him, them to create content for oh, TCM. Sure. And you know, yeah. to their credit, not only did they say yes, but they looked at each other, looked back at the president and said, not only will we do this, but we'll do this for free. No wow. kidding! Wow! Wow! I mean, that's that's a remarkable that's a remarkable decision made by Scorsese and, and Spielberg, and you know that will make me want to go see any movie they come out with. Yeah. Ever because yeah. that that was just a very decent thing to do. Now, here's the other side of the story. A couple of weeks before Tabish, the vice president of content, uh, got got let go. I don't want to say he was fired because it really wasn't because he did anything wrong. They were just it was it was a budget budgetary move. So he was sure. let go. he was he was, you know, that you know how that goes. Uh, I, I actually had a chance to talk with him about the campaign I'm doing about Robert Youngson and trying to get Robert Youngson's films, The Golden Age of Comedy and When Comedy Was King, right. into the Library of Congress. We, we, we've talked about this. Sure, sure. And uh, Tabish at the festival seemed interested. He said, here's my card. Please, let's chat about this after the festival because people are going to keep hitting me up all weekend long. And I want to make sure I remember this. It seems like a great idea to try to bring Youngson into the spotlight as a as as a preservationist of film. So uh, about a week after the uh, festival, I sent an email. And again, I got a response from Tabish directly saying, oh, yeah. I remember the conversation. I'm still very excited about it, excited about it uh, over the prospect, but I can't promise you. And I thought that was very, that was very, very weird. Yeah. <laughs> because he didn't say it in a way where he was trying to poo-poo me. Oh yeah, maybe we'll do it in the future. I can't promise. No, he was basically saying, yeah, I'm very excited about this. Yeah. I want to do it, but 
uh, let's revisit this because I, I can't promise you. Yeah. All right. Well, that that set, seemed all right, but something was not right. Something was, as Shakespeare would say, something was rotten in Denmark. Sure. Well, a week later, he lost his job. That's what was rotten in Denmark, and 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 so he knew something was up. But I mean, I wouldn't be privy to that information. Who am I? I I had just met the guy. Yeah. So I mean, he wasn't going to tell me, and he and he shouldn't. I mean, this is something that's internal. It's internal politics. So they bring him back, and I'm thinking, well, I'm surely not going to go bother him now. He's got a lot to sort out. He's just lost 70 of his colleagues. So he's right. got a lot on his plate. I'm going to leave him alone. I mean, I think I owe him that. I mean, he's been very decent with me. We've He's actually corresponded back and forth. He deserves to do what he needs to do best, which is to save TCM. Well, um, about two weeks after he returns, I get an email, and it was a remarkable email from from Charlie Tavish, basically saying, not only uh, am I excited about contacting you again, but we are going to do the Robert Youngson evening in November. Oh, wow. I want to great. thank you for the idea. Yeah. I'm, wow, and th that means I've got an exclusive. I also know some of the programming that's going on in November at, at TCM. They're gonna have a night <laughs> devoted to Robert Youngson. And, yeah. and, I, and I thought, what a smart thing to do to do it in November. The, the Library of Congress makes their selections in, or the announcements of their selections in December. They probably yeah. finalize that list in early, early December. But, you know, he's basically bringing it out right before they make their decisions. We have been campaigning with the Library of Congress. Now it looks like we have TCM on board with the idea of Robert Youngson's films going into the uh, the, the, the National Film Registry. And if, it, if, if one of them gets selected, we can thank TCM for the effort. Sure. And I, I am just amazed at a man who's got so much on his plate. I mean, literally his job on the line, the gutting of an entire cable network. Yeah. And he has the decency to contact me and say, oh, by the way, you know, I still like your idea. Let's do it. It yeah. solidifies mm -hmm. my, uh, my, uh, my job as a historian to be able to say that I was able to not just place a movie, but an entire evening uh, onto TCM, which is the gold standard of classic films. And I feel that I've done a service to the fans at TCM. So I'm really excited about this. As you should be, and as we are. Yeah. yeah. In fact, you know what? It's funny you should say this, because I think I just got an email from Charlie Tabish right now. This this is breaking. I just got it this second. Breaking news right here. On and here's what it says. I just got this. I'm telling you, I can't even believe this just came up. At the moment, it's scheduled for November 5th, beginning at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And but don't tell anybody. But don't tell no, anybody. No, we're telling. You're breaking the news right now, November 5th. <laughs> and, and then he writes, and thanks again for the kind note and support. I really appreciate it. So November 5th is when, and I can't believe we're That's talking great. about this, and the email just came through. That awesome. just never happens. <laughs> except, except on Celebrating Act 2. That's exactly right. November 5th is when it's going to air. So yeah. there you go. We just broke the news on Celebrating Act 2. You know, Manny, I think this story just proves that uh, they brought back the right guy. Unfortunately, not enough of his support staff. Mm -hmm. But brought back the guy who is proof that the old TCM, we don't know what the new TCM is going to be, but the old TCM Really, the heart of it was people who loved the old movies, loved the product, and they were like just like the fans. That's why it was such a popular channel, I think. Well, let me let me go one step further in something that I, I wrote back to Charlie after he confirmed this this evening. I basically said that his legacy was on full display because not only did people like Scorsese and Spielberg come to his to his aid, but you know, the little fan out in Spokane you know, or Schenectady, they came out in support of Charlie Tabish and the entire staff. So it's really, it's really decent to see that everybody understands that this man behind the scenes, I mean, should have been virtually uh, very, very unknown, was very well known, very well respected, uh, beloved, dare I say. And I mean, 
the little guy wins. I, I, I mean, for the most part. I mean, D David slaughters Goliath, and Goliath is forced to say, "Okay, we'll bring him back." I mean that, that that's a that's a great story. I mean that's that's worthy of any great screenplay that might have been used by Frank Capra, as far as I'm concerned. And you threw in Scorsese, you threw in Spielberg, uh, and you even included the humble Coleman and Kirsch. <laughs> and we broke news. I can't I can't believe that this email came just as we're talking about it. This is just remarkable. So November fifth, an evening with Robert Youngson on TCM beginning at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Awesome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.